Hey Tom. Come in, mate. Okay. Hello guys and welcome back to the Combat Hour and next to me I've got a very very up and coming Liverpool boxer, Tom Farrell. How are you, mate? Good, mate, to you? I'm afraid I have to apologise. I need to apologise for it because my shit dog said he was coming. I know, I believe so. He stood me up, honey. Me? You need to hear the excuse, though. The excuse he's just gave me. <laughs> Hi, mate. Uh, me and Tom are waiting for you to do his interview. He's excited to say hello. What? Is this today? I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> I'd have to smash the dog for you. John Berger, that time. Oh, mate, honest to God. My shit is... The most intelligent, uneducated, cleverest, stupid. <laughs> I don't know what way to go with him, mate. He's just mental. But so it's just me and you. It's just going to be me and you. But don't worry, don't worry. I, I know more than enough about you. And I'm going to make sure that everybody else knows the same at the end. Where'd you get the t-shirt? I'm on the lads there. Sent me. Lovely, huh? What is it? New Hope. New Hope after that, yeah. So we say... Thought it was a little weird. Bit of advertisement. Yeah. This is a Luciano. Seems, yeah, to all, yeah. seems to be all the rage now, doesn't it? Yeah, all these t-shirts yeah. and stuff like that. Do you pay for yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, do me a favour, mate, and tell me where you're at in, in, in your career now. You know, how are you getting on? What's coming up? And... Um, well, I've had two fights since my first defeat, so I've got two wins under me about since since last September. Um, just just waiting things, few things in the pipeline. I'm waiting to, to sort of get, get a new fight date announced and... Get ready to push on. Get you, get back in there. Your most recent was it Musenya? Um, Mwenya. Mwenya. Just Sanga. Mwenya. Just Sanga. I don't to say yeah. Yeah, yeah. How'd you find it? Yeah, it was a, it was a, I think it it went well. Jordan. Obviously, it went well. I stopped in the third round. Yeah, we watched it. First yeah. round, I was I was a little bit cautious. Like, just taking me time, really, because I couldn't really find any sort of footage of him, so I didn't really know what to expect. On the top of that, I had a cut in the fight before, which was six weeks before, so I had a little nick on that eye, which meant yeah, I couldn't spar. That's, that's still there. Yeah, so I couldn't spar for four weeks. I could, well, I couldn't, I couldn't certainly yeah, do anything for four weeks, so I think I hadn't sparred at all, apart from the week before. I thought I'd give it a go, see my eyes. Uh, so I literally done like a four, four or six rounder, um, and then just my eye held up okay, so I just thought, no, what that'll do me. I felt sharp enough. Yeah. Um, obviously, I was still fifth in the last fight, and I almost just kept that sharp and so I went into it just trying to sort of find my feet first and thought I'll have a little look at him and he came out quite sharp yeah, and no, like shocking fair, when, when I watched it myself mate I thought why is he being so cautious yeah. more than capable of knocking this kid out at any given point yeah. the Tom Farrell that we know the Tom Farrell who's 15 and 1 yeah. can put this kid away so maybe there's uh, maybe it's your boxing plan maybe you had a plan I think I, I always knew I was going to get some so I thought have a little look and to be fair, when he did come out, he came out, he stayed away, he was southpaw, and the footage that we had seen wasn't southpaw, so I was a little bit a little bit took back by the thought, aye, 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 what's he doing here? And then, when, when I obviously tried to engage through a little few lazy shots where I'd been a little bit not switched on, yeah. and he called me a couple of times and thought, I'll have to uh, be careful, and he looks live. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, as I said, I, knew, I always knew I was going to get him. Second round, I picked her up a little bit, put my foot on the gas, I ate him, him once or twice, where he's grabbed old, uh, and then third round, obviously, landed the, the good shot. So, uh, and before that, he was what? Uh, uh, Angel Emilioff? Yeah, Angel Emilioff. Angel Emilioff. Yeah. Not Angle. No, not another oh, fighter. Right. So, uh, do you feel as though, obviously these two fights are on the, on the arse end of O.R. Davis, which we're going to get to in a minute, do you feel as though it's just back to building again now? Back yeah, that, fir- that, that first one stuff. definitely was. Um, the first one was... Do you know what? Me, me manager Steve Woody said that I would have thought it was a little bit easier than that. Um, he obviously was struggling for the opponent late on, and then he got Angel Emilov, who was meant to be coming over. I think he was meant to be 10 7, 10 8 the day before. And when he's got here, he started saying, uh, Am I all right to skip the way it was at two o'clock? He said, I'm just going to skip, skip a bit of weight off. So I looked down and I thought he was solid, arm, big chest on him. I thought. There's not a chance he's 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 the lightweight, yeah, especially yeah. when he's saying that as well. So we started skipping on our gym, 
Jeg husker, der, it was March, early March, so we still quite cold, our gym, like freezing in the winter. Yeah. So he's been skipping, and I was like, he's not going to get more weight off, just get him on, see what he is. So he's gone on, he's been 10 stone 13. I was like... <laughs> it's not even a little bit, it's not even marginal big, that big really, bruise, is it? Big bruising, so he's miles over. Um, to be fair, the scales, my, my, I thought the scales were a little bit odd, because I was, I was, again, I was meant to be 10, 7, 10, 8, and I was just, just over like 10, 9. So he was still 4 pounds heavier than me, but... I thought so. What? I'm obviously I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn him down. Let Let's get it on. You know, when when he was in there, he was he was hard work because he was solid. He was hard to budge and yeah, he was big he, shots. Yeah, he was throwing his head in and hit me in the back of the head and I probably could have had an easier fight than that. But you know, it, uh, you know, yeah, it didn't look the easiest fight in the world to be fair, mate. I mean, yeah. he did look like a big kid. Um, how did you feel like you approached it? I mean, because what I noticed was, to be honest with you, Tom, when you, you felt it, didn't you? So what he did, he did, he didn't really hit me though. It was I never, was he never like ever threw a straight shot. Like yeah, was, uh, never threw a straight shot or a shot where it went oof. It yeah. was more inside in the clinch. Dirty and he just clubbed me around the back of the head, and the referee was kept warning us from like kept for for fighting dirty. But it was literally it was he was clubbed me in the back of the head. And you don't realize how dangerous that is. No, I agree, mate. It was a bit it looked like frustrating night here. You, you know, and and I suppose with all the. Um, Politics going into it, somebody turned up at that weight. Yeah. He didn't have to take the fight so fair play. And I always say this, you know what I to say this to anyone, and, and I've said it before on the show, that if you ask, you know, a fighter's a fighter. If you ask a fighter to fight, he's going to just go out and fight. It's the coach's job to protect the fighter from himself. Mm. Because that's just exactly what you are. You're a fighter. So if you, you, you just say, oh, I'm just going to fight, I want to fight, I want to fight. It's up to your coach, isn't it, to say... Yeah. Whether he can deal with that, whether he's capable of that or whether he might. Obviously, your coaches had full, you know, capabilities and getting towards he can deal with it. And he did. Well, we we knew obviously that the weight wasn't going to be a big issue. You know, I've I've boxed at eleven stone before, but not not so much as a as a professional. But years ago, I was an amateur. It wasn't like a a, a big thing to give him that weight because we knew it was a level above him. But he he was effectively a gentleman. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But he was he was going to be a tough night. He wasn't just going to come and roll over. But yeah, it was obviously a. A calculated risk, like we were making a jump at him. It was always going to be uh, a risk, especially. I mean, look, somebody turns up four or five pound heavier, and then on the back end of a loss with someone as big as O'Hara Davis, I couldn't imagine one how you felt. It's a psychological mm. evaluation in yourself going into that fight. But you give yourself some credit, mate. You don't have to do. And, and, and yeah. there you go. What I, what I want to go into, mate, is um, I want to go into Kofi Yates. Yeah. He was a big kid. He was. He was. Yeah. He was. He, he, I mean, I think he came in at thirteen and one, wasn't he? Yeah, he, that was, was a was a really big name. Yeah, film, that yeah. was probably my big, my big test, my big first. I think that's what made Tom Farrell. Tom Farrell, wasn't it? Yeah, it's got we, me a name out there, didn't it? Yeah, we all started to stand up and listen once you beat him. Yeah, it was a good fight. Yeah, he great fight. Yeah. See, how, how do you feel about it? Um, yeah, boss fight. Um, that was me first sort of showman on Sky. Yeah. Um, the fight got put was, I think it was like. April, I've just boxed on the 2nd of April in the FO arena. My hand was cabbaged and I was like, oh, I've got, got wind of the, this show on Goodison, which would be like in a, next weekend, obviously yeah, two years yeah. ago. I was like, I'm going to be all right for that, obviously in my blue. I was thinking, I'm going to be all right, I'll be sad. So I started off light duties, you know what I mean? Not really punching. Um, and they sort of offered like a six rounder for X amount of money and then went, oh, you can have a 10 rounder against like a decent kid like on Sky and I was like no at first at no first you know what either. but at first I was thinking I've only ever done six rounds like am I going to be alright doing yeah. doing ten I'm, I'm going to be fit enough it's a childhood dream as well isn't it to yeah, fight of course, at yeah, Park of course. with a name as big as Kofi Yates yeah, and a ten rounder and, and you know whatever. it's not even about but the money I could have I could have uh, I could have very easily had a six round and sucked me money and got in, like got in the crowd but you know <laughs> like I thought yeah let, let, let's do it um, and obviously they said that's when they sort of came back and mentioned what about someone from Manchester and then they mentioned Kofi Yates so I already had a bit of a close relationship with Kofi we knew each other yeah. uh, because I used to when I used to do my stand condition at No Limits where obviously I had to you know, full time he was doing little bits with them from Arnie's gym um, so we'd sparred in that as well literally sparred in like the February before it so I think when we both sort of got asked if we'd fight each other, we might have. I think we both thought, have they, these asked for this or have, so there was a little bit of yeah, little bit yeah. of bad blood thinking. Have you? Has he said he'll fight me or like a little bit of? 
Like you figured needle. something out in sparring. Yeah, so but it weren't the case and you know, when we, we met for the first press conference at Goodison Park, we like it was, it was mad I walked in the toilet behind uh, Jose Burton. I think I walked in on my own and then Jose Burton and Kofi are talking in the toilet, going, Who are you fighting? And I was like, Turn around, he went, Kofi's like him. So we're, I'm, so we're having a burst and I'm laughing, going, Yeah, I thought you'd ask me in it, but that just sort of cleared the air. And you know, it was, there was no like animosity then, it was all it, like, you know, we're matey, but it's a tough sport. We're going to put it to one though, side, it? yeah. So it's a, it's a tough sport, I mean, I suppose because you've been to a, a couple of gyms, you've made friends along the way. And so I still fight some of your main friends. Yeah. It's a difficult process. Well, it's happened it? a couple of times. I wonder if I've had Tom Carras since then. That's right, yeah. Um, so that was a mad one. But yeah, yeah, Kofi was sort of like me big, me big sort of, like coming out fight everyone sort of knew who I was then. So this was the Tony Bellew on the card. Yeah. And you got a chance to fight as an Evertonian in Goodison mm-hmm. Park. Now, okay, fair play. Tony Bellew on the card. But this is still your main event, isn't it? This is for you. Yeah, yeah. The big, I mean, the big you couldn't one. imagine. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of Evertonians that you would love to have done something like that. That's something you can take off and say, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I got some back. What was it like? What was the atmosphere like? Because although, look, I mean, although the crowd were probably predominantly there to watch Tony, and it was a full crowd, you're a Liverpool lad. Yeah. So when you come out, did you get did you get the crowd that you expected? Did you get the applause that you expected? Was it was it was you in awe? Yeah, it was, it was nuts, you know, I'd been to the game, I haven't seen like a lot of so I'd been to the Everton match, like, I think the last game of the season, like a couple of weeks before, and I was just looking, thinking, I'm going to be on there fighting in a couple of weeks, and it was a bit <laughs> mad, and then the day just went like a blur, like, it's mad, you can't get the time back, it, it just, so you've got to enjoy it while it's there, it just goes, it goes like a flash, and I remember getting picked up, and then before I knew it, we were there, and we were getting ready, and no, before I knew I was going out to the ring and I was just looking around when I got in the ring. It was obviously it was a little, a little bit cooler when I was boxing. The sun had sort of gone in a little bit. And you know, it was mad, it was just a mad experience to be fighting outside. Would you say it was one of the best days of your life? Definitely, yeah. Probably it'll be hard to beat that to be honest. But, no, I've won a title since then. Um been in some big fights, had some some great nights, but it'll be hard it'll be hard to beat that. Maybe if it, I'll beat it if I go and get another title like other some part in the future. Well, you know, hopefully you'll be able to call the shots in the future, mate. Hopefully you'll you know you'll 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 be a household name so you can do what Tony does and says, I wanna fight there and they'll be lucky to have him, you know. But as I say, Tom look, something like that is 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 gonna be hard to beat, unbeatable. When you were a kid Obviously, you were born a blue. Yeah. Not mine, you're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you were a kid, what what, 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 what made you go down this road, Tom? What did Boxing. Um, imagine, you know, you know what, I was never, I'd always, I'd had a little go a few times. So, when I was like 13, 14, I used to get the bus and with my mates, he was going, yeah, I'll come to this gym. So, we'd have, I'd have a little go and then wouldn't, it didn't really stick at it because I always loved footy. Yeah. Um, Played footy Saturday, Sunday, I'd go footy every night, be playing with the lads. And then I think once you sort of get to like the age of like 15, 16, you start like sort of fading out, footy fizzles out. And I wasn't really playing as much. And my mates who, who was hanging around at the time, they started going to Dove Gym. Dove yeah. Which is not, not far from us. So we used to walk. And I've all, I always like liked having a little spa and getting in like, and mixing, mixing it up with the lads, messing around. But in the end, I just sort of took a shine to it, and the the lads who was, the lads who were running it said, "Listen, do you want to get your medical?" And I was like, "Yeah, come on, let's go." So <laughs> before I knew it, I had my first first amateur fight after only about six months, and I think like <coughs> I've never I, I don't think I've been as nervous as that. I was like I was I think I was all right, and then I got in the ring, and I was like, Pfft. and I just thought, no, I can't do nothing now. I'm in that. I'm here now. Can't yeah, get up now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, I'm here, and I ne- never forget the lad's name, um, I still see him as well, he's, he lives round by ours. Scouser. Yes, yeah, Michael, Michael Richardson his name was. Isn't it weird, isn't it weird, because as, as Scousers, we'd prefer to fight someone out the city, wouldn't we? I don't like, I don't yeah. like, yeah, I never yeah. liked the idea of fighting. But it's mad as an amateur, you, obviously you're fighting local, local lads gym, all the yeah. time, yeah. so like, but then, obviously when, you, when you're turning professional, you're like, well, why am I going to go and fight him when I can go and fight someone Spread like this or that? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 mad, and because you've spent so much time, like around these people from other gyms, and you're you're matey with other gyms, and 
So then when you turn professional, it's like, oh, I've known him for years. Why am I going to fight him? Or, yeah. Well, it's, it's business. And it's, it's, again, it's, it's business. It's getting paid. But who, who's your role model? Who, who do you look up to at that time? Who did you want to be? I think when I was, I used to love Atten, Ricky Atten. Mm-hmm. Ricky Atten was probably like, was the, the main man for me, like at that time, or Naz. Naz used to love Naz. He always watched videos of Naz. Ricky Atten. Do you know what? I'll have to agree with that. Ricky Atten, I love that fella. Yeah, and do you know what? You know what? Because we'll, of him. We'll have to... On, on, we're actually on speaking terms to Ricky we'll have to get him in yeah. it'd be alright to get Ricky in have a chat wouldn't it yeah, well it, I think it's because of Ricky Atten I've always like took a dislike into my weather never forgive me weather for the <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think a lot of people have have they no but I remember that fight as well I remember him talking about it saying it's he didn't even see half the shots coming out. He had some following, didn't he? It was like he had what, he the brought the biggest 000, crowd over there. Didn't 20 thousand going over to Vegas to watch him. Something, something else. So you're rocket watching Ricky Atten. And then you went to Stockbridge Village. Yeah. Um, had a few years at Stockbridge Village before I then went on to Nosey Vale. And now you're at No Limits. Yeah. So 41 amateur fights later. Yeah, 41 amateur fights. What was your record as an amateur? I think I won 27 and lost. 14 or 26 or 15. This isn't it, because I mean, when you think about it, 41 amateur fights, 15 pro fights. Yeah, you've had, you've had plenty, haven't you? 62 fights, mate. Yeah, it was 16, 16, so 20, 41, 6, yeah, 57. It's a lot of fights, mate. It's not the ones in town as well. I, I, I ask myself that all the time. <laughs> I keep forgetting what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Yeah. Let's go into O'Hara Davis. Yeah. We have to go there. Yeah, it's not what it doesn't bother me. It like it's I was there every step of the way, so I've seen you at the press yeah. conference. I was there um and a lot of Davis hasn't got a decent reputation in this city because of his his own stupidity to be well, I think not only the city, never mind the country as well. There's a lot of people now who don't like a lot of Davis and I think a lot of people you probably had the most support on that night. Hmm. Because so many people wanted you to bury yeah, him. I know. I've never known anybody. And, and you know what? Even though we've got characters in boxing, Tom, we have got characters, but they're always love or hate. They're always like Marmite, you know, like your Tyson yeah. Furies or your Conor McGregor's in MMA. It's a kind of love or hate, but with this guy, there's no, nobody likes him, do they? Oh, what? Truth be told, I, I didn't problem, really. Tom, what is it? I didn't really hate him. Like, I, I never really had to. I knew, I knew what he was about. A bit of a gobshite, like, but he never got to me that much. Um, I never let never really let him affect me all right up 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 through the camp. I had a little bit of words with him, just to say me peace when he had to go at the at the press the last press conference. Yeah. But like other than that, I weren't bothered, and still to this day, I, like I'm not like it doesn't ask me. You're not personally bothered. No, like when what he was calling me, you? I think he was calling me a bum, and I was just like, you can't you can't call me a bum when you bottled it, like. Seen that fight. He, 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 he turned, he turned his, back. his back. He jibbed it. He, he bottled it. You know what I mean? So you can't call anyone that. So it went. It didn't affect me. I know you started to get under my skin. I was laughing like a, a lot of the time. When he now I understand talking. that Tom. I understand him wanting to get under your skin, but he abused the whole city, didn't he? Yeah. What did he say to him? Off the record. Just calling him a shit house. <laughs> yeah. Just, just said that how it is. Said you're a shit house. Don't be quitting. Don't be quitting like you did last time. But. <laughs> So you gave him just as much back, didn't you? Yeah, of course, yeah. You've got to have me did as you ever, Did you ever get a chance to talk to him on a level? Because I, I don't know whether you noticed not too long ago. I mean, he made a bit of a mess up on Twitter. I'm not going to go too much into it because I don't think he understood what he was saying. Remember he mentioned Hillsborough? Yeah. I think I think it was our, our, our boy Robbie Davis had a pop at him over it. Do you know what I mean? Because Robbie hates him, doesn't he? Yeah, Robbie, <laughs> Robbie hates him. him. Robbie hates him. <laughs> he does. Uh, do you know what? Fair play to him. So... He said something he shouldn't have said. I can't even remember what he said. All I know is he mentioned something he shouldn't have said. But then there was an apology that followed it. Mm. But then he said it wasn't him. It was his, his management. But that's what I mean. I think at, at one point I thought to myself, I don't really think he's he's aiming at Hillsborough. And, but now he's acting daft and acting as if he, if he didn't. I didn't know. I couldn't really work yeah. out what, what was going on. He's, so. a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a difficult kid. His knees are difficult. I remember, mm. I remember being at the press conference and he's just sitting there and he shouts it to the crowd. My watch. <laughs> what yeah. My watch is worth more than all mates were giving him loads. Oh, mates. Yeah, and I, but then, do you know what? He, he, like at the same time, my mate, my mate was giving him loads. My mate had, had, his, had me back. And then the next thing is he just led me, mate, and went, see him there, you need a pair to say there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's, 
Dus ik kill me. Ik kon daar alles de laatste dat ze weten. Ik ben mee met z'n Wat was je mate's name? Maybe, and you know what? I trained them for nothing oh, after that fight. Trained them, Did you? Tra- trained them, he had a white collar and one, so. Did he? Yeah, he, he, say, he was saying to me, I want to uh, I wanna, I wanna get in shape, I need to start, start losing this weight. And he's always going, he's maybe, always on the case about our training. Maybe a lot of Davis has done him a favour. Yeah, there, do you know what? He was, he's always on the case about our boxing, like, he know, he's, he's always got an opinion on everything, do you know what I mean? He's like, proper, like, into, into boxing, so I'll tell you what, have a white collar. Have a little charity fight and I'll, I'll train you for nothing. Yeah. And, and so we did, and he won, so he's retired one and all. I haven't seen him since he hasn't been back since. He has, honestly. <laughs> so, Tom, your personal life, mate, are you going to keep your children? No. You got no children? No, no. You don't want them? No, no, we do, yeah, definitely. Are definitely do, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah That's yeah, actually good. Uh, no, not yet, and not soon either. How old are you? 28. How old do you reckon? 21. I've seen the way you went. Just 21, mate. The, um, and how does your missus feel about your career? And is she, uh, obviously, you're going to tell me she's a completely supportive lady. But I understand, being an, an, an fighter myself, that sometimes it, the conflict in the home is so hard and you're on fight diets and you're, yeah. you're, you're struggling with cutting weight and, and, and then you go home and it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. Is, does course, she, is yeah. she okay with it? Does she, she adapt to it? On one hand, yeah, she... She she loves it and like enjoys it, but then obviously there's the there's the diet and there's the moodiness being horrible to her. Snapping, it's like me when it? when you're on low carbs and you're snapping and just just. Your yeah. excuse me, is yeah. you know what they do it every month. <laughs> <laughs> you do it every few months. Yeah, every what I mean. few months. And anything lines up? It's any fight fights lined up? No, not not as yet. There's, there's talks of a uh, fight in Africa, believe it or not. Um, I think before Christmas they had the UK vs Africa show in Manchester, and there's been a bit of a turn leg in Which July. Which sanction is that? I don't, I don't know. I'm like literally that's that's all I know. I've, I've asked Steve. You're under the sanctioning body of boxing, aren't you? Yeah. So it's just boxing. And they allow you. Um, yeah, they allow you. They allow you to go over. Um, but I don't, I don't really know. That's that's all the details. Because I got back to Steve Wood and was like, "What's happening with it?" He went, "Well, I sent you an opponent. I was waiting for you to sort to confirm it." So I said, "Well." I don't know how much, what for, how many yeah, rounds, yeah. where it is, what date it is. So he's coming back to me with some more details. I don't know what Amadali going on there, is that? Now, I don't know whether you've heard the news lately, mate, um, but Chris Eubanks pulled, George Groves has pulled out of the Super Sixes. Has Eubank been put in? Eubank's been put in. The, it was yeah, definitely. Well, was no, it? We I had this conversation it. on the radio this morning, and for some reason, no one believes me, but well, I, I that's did, the talk. I did the whispers the, uh, like the last, last weekend. Just hadn't seen nothing concrete to say. To do, say you think, do you think he should be there? Do you think he deserves that? Do you I think, think he, Callum I, should could beat him? I think no. I think he. I think we, we want to fight, don't we? And I don't think Bremer deserves to go in it because no. I think that was tactical what Bremer done pulling yeah. out, thinking he might get the shelf for the final. I think he knew Groves was potentially going to pull out and thought he might 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 have been sick, but I think he's probably thought, you know what? If I pull out, I might get a little shot at the final. Same place as you, man. At least he's had a fight in the Super Sixes, so you know that's what normally yeah. happens, isn't it? That's yeah. normally the um, the way it works, isn't it? Whoever's lost recently. I don't think someone who hasn't been involved in the tournament should should, should replace just him. Just jump in. No, definitely One not fight, in the final. Get, yeah, get yeah. gets potentially get the title. So I think you, bank, yeah, he he was the losing semi finalist, and I think Callum Callum plays with them again. I think George always played with them. I think Callum. I, think Callum Callum him. Him. I said so. it again this morning on the radio. I think, I think Callum beat him. And 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 you know what? I was only to a text. I tweeted Paul Smith the other day, um, asking him a certain opinion about things, and I want to get him on the show just to have a chat. And the reason why I want Paul Smith on the show is I don't know about you. Do you know him personally? Only left us to speak to when when she. Have you me? ever have you ever just listen, have you ever watched him on Twitter? Yeah. Have you meet? Loves having a uh, bit of banter. Don't even. How clever is he? He's knowledgeable, like, and he, he is knowledgeable. He is. He, I don't think he gets credit for how intelligent he is. Now, I know he's a bit of a pundit. That's fair play. But this man, and I promise you now, mate, right, you can sit down with him and he'll tell you anything. I just know him, and, and that's why I want to speak to him. I just want to get him involved a little bit and talk to him. Cause, and I also want to know his opinion on what he'd think about Chris Eubank mm. jumping in with Callum, how he'd deal with it. Obviously, he's going to say Callum's going to deal with it, isn't he? You know? Um, also, what about the Lanaras, Lomachenko? Unbelievable, it? Isn't it, yeah. He's something else, isn't he? Yeah. Unbelievable. I, 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 I called it, I just thought Lomachenko, he's too good. Um, but I, I do think uh, 
i don't know what that is he showed in Gloucester you know we showed showed Lord Mitchell Coach Human as well didn't he yeah. putting them down yeah he did when, when, when that happened that's right, we were all of my mates watching it so I couldn't believe it I was like oh my god have you seen Lord Mitchell go for a walk no but again he just got up didn't he he even acknowledged it fair play to him he acknowledged it he got up and he fucked him <laughs> something else isn't he yeah, yeah, we've got um, Lee Selby coming up on the weekend. Yeah, I'm I going. think we've also got a Donna Stevenson and... He's Donna Stevenson this weekend, isn't he? I can't remember. Donna he is. He's fighting... Um, oh, what's his name? I'll get back to you on that. But He's been talking about fighting Bellew again, hasn't he? He's it, talking about right, again. I think, I think Tony's Akuja. getting his choice now, isn't he? Yeah. He should fight. What do you think he should fight? Um, do you know what? I I'd, I'd put him. I think uh, when was it you were saying the other day about you know if if uh, if what's his name Joshua if Joshua vacated and let Josh you could let a uh, bomber and bomber and fight for the for the world heavyweight title it'd be something else to see him win a world heavyweight title and I'd fancy his chances against against Pavekin because he's not massive and he can be caught. Well, you know we we watched, we watched only recently David Price. He put him down. He can come down. And, and, and yeah. the thing is, as much you know, yeah, yeah, not away from David. Um, Tony would capitalise on something like that because he's got more ring craft. I think. Um, do you know what? Right, I don't know how you feel about this fight. You know, obviously Tyson Fury's got to come yeah. back. I always said, now look, I love Pricey. He's a good lad. But do you remember years ago, Pricey and Fury? Um, and Banter didn't they always saw yeah. about fighting each other stuff like that and now everybody said Fury's well past his league now and David's um, just build himself back up although David might not accept this for obvious reasons do you not think Tyson Fury's first fight would be a clever one for David financially and for Tyson physically to come back and fight each other I think he's already got his opponents hasn't he Has Fury he? Yeah. has it been announced I believe um, Price is coming back though. He's, he is, he's fighting on the 28th of July. Yeah. 27th of July, Friday, I on an MTK show. Yeah, I think his next sort of title might might, might be dropping back down to sort of British level. Now, this, is not me, this is not me trying to show lack of knowledge in boxing, okay? Because obviously Tyson Fury has got the upper hand on Dave, fair play. Now, you know, you'd be daft to say otherwise. But it, it, it's one of them, as I say, Tyson Fury's got warm up fights coming up, he's got, he's got lads coming up. And you got David Price building up. I'd love to see it just happen. I, yeah, I just like I'd to, love to I, see you know what, I think I'd like to see it because I, I want to see David in big fights because I love yeah. David and, and he's had huge grace and he's having such a tough time and he's had a bad time and the way he showed against Povetkin, you know, he's obviously interested again. He's interested in training again. And I'm not taking that away from Tyson Fury. I'm not. I, I know where to stand on the fight. But it's, it's for some reason, I don't know why, in my head, I just want to see them two get it on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just do. I also I want to watch Tony Bellew fight at Donna Stevenson again at this point where Tony's taking on the world. Mm. I'd love to see that. Do you think it'd be the same? Well, if he could avenge that defeat, I think uh, I think Bombs or said like, listen, uh, if he avenged that defeat, then he'd avenge he'd avenged all the time if he'd be beat them, wouldn't he? Because he's avenged the defeat against Gravely. So if he de- avenges the defeat against Stevenson. And he's, uh, he's got to go for that really yeah. and I do think yeah I think definitely Pricey Pricey and Fiori could get it on because Pricey is the only person who's ever beat well the last man to ever beat Tyson Fiori that's what I mean and as, as I say you know he's, he's got he's got unbeaten as a pro and the last time he's beaten as an amateur I know a lot of people are going to say it doesn't make sense so oh, Tyson Fiori went to throw it and this that the other but I'm thinking different reasons that I've just got my own reasons for it and, and I think be something I'd like to see personally. No, no. The um, Lisa will be fighting definitely. Got is it? What's who's he fighting on the weekend? Warrington. Warrington, that's right. Um, it's gone a bit aggressive, hasn't it? Mm. They've got a little bit aggressive lately, then, too. Um, yeah. The last press conference, they're having a pop at each other. I can't wait to watch that fight. I'm excited yeah. to watch that. Um, and then, Anthony Joshua. Again, it's nothing. It's, it's different with Anthony, isn't it? Anthony Joshua, because he has a fight and then. Advertisement, Lucas Aid of the Under Armour. He's yeah. that big. It's the cash cow in each. I mean, who's next for him? If Dylan White. I don't think Wilder. No, Wilder. I don't think Wilder. Um, I think he has got a mandatory. I'm sure his mandatory is Pavekin after that that win that Pavekin had. But I don't think unless I think unless he unifies, then he's got to fight Pavekin. I think. I think they'll put him next then. 
Because you know what it always is. happens in boxing or in MMA? This always happens, doesn't it, where we've got an idea of super fights in our head, haven't we? And we've all, as fans, we've all got what we'd love to see. But their teasers are they, they never happen until... It's, all, it's political, isn't it? You, you know, with they that, never happen until with they're the, too old. With the different promoters that are involved, you know, they're out to make as much money as they can, so they won't say, right, let's get it on now. They'll go build up, build up, build them up. Let's have it and have another fight and have another fight. Get a title, both get a title, make as much money as they can. Yeah. So it's, it is very political. And obviously, Eddie Ern and Frank Warren don't really get on. So they're always having little goals at each other. And that's where it sort of becomes competitive. And of course. You won't get very often Frank Warren fighters fighting against Eddie Ern fighters or... It's, it, it becomes a little bit like that. So, yeah, so we, are, we, we sometimes we don't see the, the best fights. Well, I think this year we definitely have seen some. I some think it has, has been great, and it's, it, there's quite a lot to come, I'm sure. Um, if I ask you now, if I put on your toes right now, who would you love to fight? Who would you like to get in the ring with, even if you respect him, even if you like it? But what would, what would be your ideal fight? Ideal fight? As in right now, or like as in in the future, or... Let's say you were top of your form. Let's say you were on a seven-win side streak. Let's say for argument's sake, you feel the best Tom Farrell you can be. Who do you want? Yeah. It's got to be a bit weird to land like a title or something. So, I don't know. Good question, though. We've got you here, haven't we? Yeah. It's stumped me. Nah, it's working overtime, yeah. So you wouldn't consider getting your dicky back off a water day? Yeah, no, yeah. I, def- I definitely down and on. I would like to to prevent that. I'd, I'd take it a lot differently. Yeah. Um. I think I just made a, a bit of a bit of a slip up. Um. I relaxed too much. And I think if if I, I reacted a lot differently, I could have made a different night for yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. definitely yeah. In the later stages, that's when he starts. Yeah. To slow down. Yeah. Um. I just just started a little bit bit of a cagey, and he just caught me early on. That's what I mean. I've said to everyone who who sort of asked me about that, like. He was saying he, he almost is still doing it. And obviously, it, it's my first defeat. It, it was going to hurt, but I was over it quite quick because I knew I knew what, had, what, what the it's, problem it's, was. It's who you've actually lost to. You haven't lost to a ball. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, yeah. You know what? Like him or hate him, that kid can box. Yeah. He can, he, he can box. And, and that's what he's got going for him, isn't it? Um, I'd like to see you back in there with him. And I can't wait to see your next fight. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Tom Farrell. I am. I've always been a friend of yours since, you know, a long time ago. And and I, I, that's one thing I'd want to see. I, th- I don't know, what, you know, I think the whole city want to see something like that, don't they? But you've got a bright future there, you mate, and we're all 100% behind you. And it's going to be great to see where you end up. Now, I'm going to say these are questions here that we ask everybody just so we can get to know Tom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one way of answers, Tom. Careful, yeah, what, what are you coming at me with? <laughs> one way of Tom only. One way of answers. One way of Go on. See how far we can get with you. Okay. Favourite food? Pizza. Favourite song? It's a song called Malice Sauce. So you can shoot me, me and Gantin to the... The, um, the jam, is it? The jam, yeah. The jam. Great song, that, isn't yeah. it? Bit of Billy yeah. Elliot. Yeah. But I, I do love Dignity. No Dignity? Dignity, Deacon oh, Blue. Oh, yeah, oh, Deacon Blue. Very hard there as well. So I was like, I can't start using the same song as Daddy. So Paul would come into that? No, Paul, Real Gone Kid. Real Gone Kid, that's right, yeah, yeah. Favourite band? Favourite band? Oasis. Yeah, what's that? All oh, the Arctic Monkeys, but it's two words, so I thought I'd go with those. Yeah, well, okay. Favourite boxer? Lomachenko. I, I, I've had a, f- a lot of arguments with people saying I reckon he is the best ever. The greatest ever. Whereas he might not have the legacy now, and everyone's saying he's only, but he's oh, only three, had three thirteen fights, titles. three different three levels. world titles yeah. at, at, at three different three, weights. I want something else to beat that. Me at, after time. thirteen fights, everyone's saying compared to Mayweather and Pacman, the way they moved up the weights, he's doing that now, and you know he's all. Listen, everyone's got their own opinion on you know, Mayweather. I think he a lot of his fights were settled for him. Sorry, I'll put it out there, mate. Mm. That's just how I feel. He did beat the best, but then he beat them. He didn't beat them at the prime. Yeah, and that right. was a problem that I was talking about earlier with the politics of boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's worst ever boxer. Worst ever boxer. Um, Danny Donchev boxed. <laughs> <laughs> boxed him in his second fight. Wasn't he 
86 losses. Uh, no, he, I think he'd won a couple, but he was just an absolute nightmare. He didn't want to, f- he didn't want to box. <laughs> I think he was just uh, he was throwing the head in, holding me at one point. He ran my ankles and I was like looking for the ref. I ended up getting a point off me because uh, cause of low blows. But yeah, it was a frustrating night at the office there. Favourite movie? So many, you know. Um, I say Goodfellas. I like, love Goodfellas. Great film. Yeah. Great film. Worst movie. Worst movie. Shark Nado. <laughs> you ever see? Ever seen that? <laughs> Shark Nado. It's the worst film. <laughs> <What's> that? <laughs> exactly. It's the baddest tornado that's ever seen. Oh, I've seen, seen it. it. <laughs> I can't stop going Shark, tornadoes. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And your last one, mate. Favourite sex position. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what Tom, is that? It's been great talking to you, mate. Thanks very much. Nice one. Now, look before you go, mate, okay? Um, obviously, you've got a, a, a punch machine. You want to see what you register on. You want to see if you can beat Molly, because my shit isn't. Obviously, for insurance yeah. purposes, we need you to wear a glove, mate. Yeah. So, um, make a crack man right now. So. <laughs> Here we go, I'm on a set for this, man. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put a bit of more air in, man. Lana, do No. No. Come on. If it beats Molly and, Molly and Masha, then I'll just jib it. I know, mate. Something like that. Maybe feel. Maybe. 15 and 1, 4K ops. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm going to let him Come on. This one's better. Hold on, I'll make a little bit more. Yeah, it's pizza. Nice. 83 meters. I like it. Let me lock that. Next game.